This image is a great example of serious wear and tear that can occur in photos over the years. And it was brought in by one of the user group members as part of the rejuvenating old photos and documents themed meetings. And we would like to thank her for allowing us to use this image to showcase one of the retouching techniques we reviewed during that particular meeting. It's an image that would take a considerable amount of time and care to get fully retouched. And it's equally an example of an image where a large range of retouching techniques and tools would be used. You'll probably find yourself working with tools such as the spot healing brush, the healing brush, the patch tool, and a whole number of other tools. In, in this video, however, we'll be focusing on a technique used to fix the eyes and the mouth, and we'll be working with the clone stamp tool and the clone source panel to fix these. Let's get started. First, we'll create a copy of the background by selecting it in the layers panel and pressing Command J on the Mac or Control J on Windows. Let's rename this layer. Edit copy. Next, we'll add a blank layer above this by option on the Mac or Alt clicking on the new layer button. Let's name this layer cloning. Before we start using the clone stamp tool, Let's zoom in to the image so we can really focus on the eyes and the mouth a little bit more. Press Command plus on Mac or Control plus on Windows. Time to start the job. So we've already selected the Clone Stamp tool in the Tools panel. And in the Options bar, let's first assure that the sample setting is set to Sample All Layers. This allows us to select cloning source details from the layers below and retouch in that currently transparent cloning layer. Also, we'll click on the clone source panel button in the options bar to display the, as it says, clone source panel. This panel allows us to control up to five clone sources and change the way in which the clone stamp tool clones. We can, with this panel, do things like rotate, flip, scale what we're applying. And this is something that we will be doing when we're trying to fix these eyes and the mouth. Now, before we do anything, we must first define the area we are cloning by Option on the Mac or Alt on Windows, clicking on the clone source. And I'm targeting the left edge of the iris for this. One of the things that you will see, and we've got the clone source panel open, is we can immediately see that we've got a large brush size selected, 500 pixels, and we also see an overlay of what we will be cloning when we start painting with the clone stamp tool. We can change the brush size either from the options bar and also change the hardness, if needed, I might go about halfway for this one to have a slightly soft edge brush. There is another way in which we can also change the brush size and that is by pressing the bracket keys on your keyboard. The right bracket will make the brush size larger, the left bracket will make it smaller. Now what I would like to do is pick up kind of the left half of her left eye and flip that and paint that over the missing right part. That's all good. We've already got the source selected, but what I really want to do is flip this horizontally. And this is where the clone source panel comes in handy. We'll click the flip horizontal button and you can immediately see that if I move my cursor back into the image area, 
that because the show overlay option in the clone source panel is enabled, we can actually continue to see what we will be cloning. Now this is not quite a correct fit. We need to also rotate this a bit to create a more natural fitting clone. So let's rotate that by grabbing the little scrubby slider and just dragging to the left. And then I'm thinking maybe about 12. I'm just trying to keep an eye and see if that's kind of a natural fit. Making my brush a lot smaller now. And seeing if I can line up. And paint in that missing eye. So that's a good example of how we could do that. When you work on the mouth, Let's have a look at a similar technique. I'll go and select a second clone source and once again, Option or Alt, click on the source I want to clone, which is going to be the corner of her mouth. Make the brush a lot bigger and we'll flip that again. And we can see that that is not really fitting with that top right corner of the mouth. We need to a rotate that a fair bit, just like we did before. And the other thing I'd like to do in this case is because the face has got a bit of perspective in it, the, the right side of that mouth is a little bit smaller than what you see on the left side. So we'll also apply some reduced scaling. Oops, I accidentally unclicked the mirroring. A little bit more. And to avoid cloning around too much of the outside area of the mouth and having a, an effect that's too severe, let's reduce the opacity a bit. Make the brush a lot smaller again. Line this up and start painting that in. And we can continue to work like this using the bottom lip to also paint in that bottom lip. And that's how we can gradually build this up. The Clone Stamp tool and the Healing Brush tool in Photoshop can make use of the Clone Source panel. And using the Clone Stamp tool together with this panel allows you to perform even more magic when retouching your old and damaged photographs. We hope you found this tutorial useful. Thank you for watching. Yeah. Uh -huh.